Hey guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. Regurgitation, when your boa loses its lunch. This is a word that strikes fear into the hearts of many boa keepers. But if your boa has regurgitated, there are some simple steps you can take to treat it and prevent it from happening again, which is what I'll discuss in today's video. And not every regurgitation is created equal. There are four main types of regurgitation which should all be dealt with differently. And I'm gonna describe that as well, so be sure to stay tuned. Okay, so almost all boa keepers at some point will experience regurgitation. So this typically happens when the snake vomits back up the food item about three to four days after it eats the prey item. And there are a number of reasons why regurgitation happens. It can be an error in husbandry. It can be due to illness in the snake. It can be due to inappropriate feeding. Sometimes you have a boa that just has a particularly sensitive GI tract, gastrointestinal tract, at some point in its life, which makes it susceptible to regurgitation. Regurgitation happens most commonly in true red tail boas, like the Suriname true red tail, but it can happen in any type of boa, and you know a lot of other snakes as well. You know, in the true red tails, I've seen it most often in Surinams and Guiana. That might just be because these are the most prevalent animals in captivity as far as true red tails. But again, it can happen in any type of boa. And people often get really depressed and upset when they see this happen. And sometimes they kind of freak out. Sometimes they do the exact opposite of what they should do to treat the regurgitation. So it's really important that you don't act on any impulse in, um, do the opposite of what you should do, which I'm gonna describe in a minute here. But I've actually come up with a scale of different types of regurgitation, and there's really four main types that, are, that happen in captivity in boas. And again, the treatment for each varies. Um, so, you know, depending on what you see and you know, what's causing this, it's gonna be a different approach to treat the uh, regurgitation. And I just want to say up front that you should always find a qualified reptile vet if your animal has any issue that leads to regurgitation. So this isn't this video isn't meant to substitute for the advice of a qualified veterinarian. Okay, so the types of regurgitation. The most common type is what I call type 1 regurgitation. And this happens in baby boas, typically up to about a year of age or so. And what will usually happen is somebody feeds them a prey item and then they come back and check on the enclosure. About three or four days later, they notice this really nasty smell, which, you know, words can't really describe how bad it can be sometimes. But this really nasty, funky smell, and they see this wet, slimy looking uh, prey item which has been regurgitated. It's um, not really digested, maybe slightly digested, but the whole animal is still there but the smell is really what gives it away. So this happens um, pretty frequently in uh, baby red tail boas, which are kept under incorrect husbandry conditions. And the most common cause that I've seen of this is when you have the hot spot too hot. If it's above around 90 degrees, it makes the animals a lot more likely to regurgitate. So you really want to check your hot spot, make sure it's no hotter than 90. Typically I keep it around 88 with my baby red tails. The cool side of the enclosure is about 75 to 80. And this is, these are the conditions where you want it. It can also happen when you feed your baby boa too large of a prey item. You wanna feed a prey item that leaves a barely visible bulge, not the largest that the animal could eat. And you also don't want to feed too often. With baby red tails, at the most you wanna feed about every 10 days. Uh, typically, I feed about every 14 days for my baby red tails to prevent the regurgitation. Some people will watch their boa, uh, its bowel movement habits, and they're kind of obsessed with their boa's pooping, and they make notes of this. I actually don't do this, but if you can watch your boa's bowel movements and you wait till your boa has emptied itself, it's a lot less likely to regurgitate because the regurgitation is just when its um, digestive tract is overwhelmed by too much food in there, and so it has to expel something if you feed it too often. Another cause can be handling roughly after you feed your boa, although in the baby red tails it's more commonly because you're feeding too large of an item, too uh, often of an item frequency, or because 
you have too much heat on your hot spot. So what you should do to treat this type of regurgitation, you want to wait at least three, if not four weeks before feeding again. And this kind of goes against the impulse of a lot of new boa keepers. You know, they have this animal that regurgitates and they're kind of stressed out about it. They want to get this in the past. So they want to feed again in like a week and hope that it's not going to happen again. But this is the worst thing you can do. You never ever want to feed a boa quickly after it's regurgitated. It sustains some irritation and some slight injury to its throat and digestive tract. And if you feed it again, it's going to make it worse. You want to give your bow a time for its GI tract to heal up a little bit before feeding it again. And waiting three or four weeks for a baby bow that's in otherwise decent health is not going to be that big of a deal. You know, it's not going to uh, harm its uh, life or really stunt its growth or anything like that. But if you wait, just a week, chances are really high that the bow is going to regurgitate again. And then that's when it gets really critical. Once you have more than one or two regurgitations, you enter this vicious cycle. And it gets harder and harder to prevent the boa from regurgitating because of the damage the cumulative regurgitation has done to its GI tract. And it's in many cases, this leads to the death of the boa. It's, probably the most common reason why baby red tails don't make it. And you know, I've said before, as much as I love true red tails, they're not the best beginner boas, they're not the best pets. You know, boa imperator and you know, some of the different morph boas are a lot better as far as a pet. And one of the reasons why is they're a lot less susceptible to regurgitation than the true red tails are. I've also noticed that this type of regurgitation is more frequent in certain bloodlines of true red tails than others. Some bloodlines just seem a little more susceptible. They have more fragile digestive tracts. But if you do experience a type 1 regurgitation, again, you want to wait at least three to four weeks before feeding again. You want to feed a prey item that's smaller than normal. You know, so if you've been feeding your boa hopper size mice, you want to feed it a fuzzy size mouse. Um, you also might want to consider feeding it a fresh or, or even live prey item. Sometimes when you have old, thaw, old frozen prey items in the freezer, they kind of get a little stale over time. And it's probably more likely that your bow is going to regurgitate a previously frozen prey item than a fresh prey item. Some people will use a probiotic supplement. Um, you know that these are like supplements for humans but they use them in snakes and I've never tried this but some people really swear by this they give the animal a dose of this probiotic and they claim that it really helps them heal up their uh, digestive tract after regurgitating so if you've ever used a probiotic you have any thoughts I'd really appreciate if you'd write in the comments below what your experience is for the rest of the viewers the second type of regurgitation will typically happen about a week or so after feeding, anywhere from about six to 10 days after the feed. And this type, it doesn't have the same really foul smell as the first type. Basically, you'll just see this little wad of fur, like hair, it almost looks like a hairball that like a cat coughed up. So sometimes when a boa has too much in its gut, it will actually cough up some of the hair. And this doesn't seem to be nearly as detrimental as the first type. So when you see this happen, you know, my interpretation is the boa just has too much in its stomach or, you know, intestine and it can't handle all of this material. So it actually coughs up some of the hair, which isn't going to be digested anyway. If you see this, um, basically what I do, if I see this and it's pretty uncommon, but I'll just skip the next feeding because it's telling you that your boa has ingested too much material in too short of a time. It needs a little bit more time to process it. And um, if you skip the next feeding, it gives the gut a little time to recover. And this is usually not too much liquid is expelled. It's just this hair. You know, with the first type, the boa loses a lot of fluid, which can be really detrimental, especially for a young boa. With the second type, it's, again, it's not nearly as detrimental and I don't worry about it nearly as much if this happens. The third type of regurgitation happens in adult boas. Typically you'll see this occur about three days to a week post feeding. It has a really, really bad smell. Often the boa will regurgitate a rodent 
which is partially digested and really slimy looking. You know, you definitely want to clean that enclosure as soon as possible. Get rid of that smell, thoroughly disinfect everything. But this can be caused by a number of different reasons. It can be due to a disease that the boa has. It can be due to inappropriate husbandry, inappropriate feeding. It can be caused by um, handling the animal too roughly after feeding. It can be also, you know, certain boas will have a, a, a predisposition. Some animals just have a weaker GI tract than others and they might be more likely to do this. But whatever causes it, this is where it's important to get a vet opinion. If there's any uh, you know, possibility that your snake is sick or has some kind of a problem, you also want to really closely examine your husbandry, make sure that the temperatures and humidity is right where it should be, the animal has adequate space in its enclosure, and the animal has adequate hiding places. Some boas are just a little more nervous than others and maybe more likely to do this. And if they don't have an area where they can hide and feel safe, they're gonna be more likely to do this. It can become chronic in many cases because once a boa does it once, even if you wait you know, a month or so to feed, there's a chance the boa is gonna do it again. And this can come down to a behavioral reason. So this can be a little tricky in some animals. You know, if you're an adult boa in decent shape, regurgitates once, it's not gonna be a life-threatening you know, thing that happens, but it's definitely a sign that something, you know, should be improved as far as the husbandry or the feeding, etc. The treatment of this type three is pretty similar to the type one where you wanna wait a while before feeding the animal again to give its GI tract time to recover. You wanna feed a smaller than normal prey item and you wanna carefully check your husbandry to make sure that it's on spot. And in addition, as I mentioned, it's really a good idea to get the advice of a qualified reptile veterinarian. A few years ago, I had an animal that was exhibiting this behavior and it had regurgitated a couple times over the course of the summer and into the fall. And basically I just stopped feeding it. It went into the winter uh, brumination, you know, the lack of feeding during the winter a little bit early. And then the following spring, it was fine. It hasn't regurgitated since. So sometimes these animals, they just need a little bit of a break from feeding to give their GI tract a little bit of time to recover. It's also the behavioral thing. You know, sometimes they just have to break out of this behavior cycle that leads to regurgitation. And sometimes that winter break from feeding is what is called for. This brings us to the last type of regurgitation, the type four regurgitation, which is an acute toxin response. And luckily I've never experienced this, but I've heard about it from other keepers. I've read about it in some of the reptile forums. So what happens is you have an adult snake that's otherwise in perfect health. It eats a prey item and then shortly thereafter regurgitates a huge amount of fluid, which often leads to a critical condition and the animal often passes away. And so this could be a response to a toxin in the food item. You know, something has triggered this acute response in the snake to get, you know, void itself of that food item. Um, the animal will typically lose a lot of fluids, you know, so it can be a very critical event to happen to an animal and, you know, you really should consult a veterinarian as soon as possible. I have a friend who had this happen to one of his boas many years ago and the animal just suddenly regurgitated, lost a lot of fluids. He said that the, he thought the snake was a goner. You know, she just snake just seemed really listless and really out of it for a while. Somehow managed to pull through and you know recover fully. But he uh, speculates there was something in that prey item, you know, where the snake somehow ingested a toxin that led to this condition. There was um, a few years ago there was some talk on some of the online reptile forums about certain types of rats that can trigger this condition. And there is a type of rat known as a Zucker rat or fat rat. And this is a laboratory model. You know, scientists who study obesity and diabetes will use these rats because they're genetically predispositioned to get really, really fat and to develop diabetes. They're a hooded rat, which means they have kind of a black head and shoulders and back. And then the rest of the rat is white. So it's a black and white rat. And they just get really, really fat. They look like these really huge obese rats. So people were claiming that certain rodent suppliers were getting these rats 
um, you know, possibly from laboratories that had bred them. You know, hopefully they hadn't been used in any experiments. But they were selling these rats and people were feeding them to their snakes and it was causing all kinds of issues because of the huge amounts of fat, including this regurgitation of this really awful smelling um, liquid that's kind of gray, chalky material in the regurgitation that they attributed to the high fat content of these fat rats. So I don't have any confirmation that this actually happened. I was a little skeptical when I read about this because rodent suppliers, they don't get their rodents from laboratories. They breed them specifically for use as food for uh, reptiles. You know, the laboratory suppliers aren't gonna release their rodents to the rodent suppliers, you know, as far as I know. That would just be a re really bad business decision and it really doesn't make sense economically. So I was really skeptical about this and honestly, I was a little skeptical that one fat rat could lead to the death of an animal. I mean, it's a high fat item. Obviously, you don't want to feed high fat rats for the animal's uh, normal diet. But once in a while, it's like going to McDonald's and, you know, indulging yourself once in a while. It's not that big of a deal. So I was a little skeptical. However, people claim that this really happened. And there was it's quite a lot of stories and anecdotes online on the forums if you do a search. So if you have any experience with this type of regurgitation or you know heard a story, I'd love to hear about it in the comments below. You know, please share with the rest of the group. So those are the four types of regurgitation. And if you do experience a regurgitation, especially if you're a true red hill keeper, the first type is the most common that you're likely to experience. Although this can certainly be distressing. It can be dealt with and you know you can bring your boa uh, through this so you know don't despair but again you want to wait at least three to four weeks before feeding again and check your conditions as far as the temperatures and general husbandry so i hope you haven't had a regurgitation event but if you do i hope this video helps you deal with it as always shoot me any questions or comments that you might have i hope this has been helpful thanks for watching and enjoy your boas